Welcome to Swing Scale Models and Electronics. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. Today we're looking at a Nintendo Switch that the power button seems to not work. So if I come here, this is a charged battery, and if I press power, nothing seems to be working. But if I stick the charger in and boot it to prompt to boot, it go ahead and charge and it works. But if I try to turn it off, long press to turn it off it does not want to work. Now this has been here previously for a bad USB port, a bad LCD connector, and uh, various other things, M92 change, and I finally got it to power on and work. It charges, it seems to be working fine, but like I said, the power button doesn't work. The volume button works, both volume button works, but the power button does not work. So I think it is a I think it is a power flex cable because when I was in here working on it before, it did it did do yeah, it did look a little raggeded. I should have changed it, but we will change it now. So I'm going to take out these four Y-wing screws with my dedicated Y-wing driver. I was using an iFixit kit, but I found these on Amazon. I'll try to put a link in the description. It was a little repair kit for fixing Nintendo Switches. And it comes with this driver, a Phillips driver, and a some picks and some stuff like that. Some tweezers maybe. So I got the three non-magnetic screws to move remove here. So this is a uh, you do have to disassemble the console pretty good to get to the power flex cable but this one is also going to get a new digitizer but that will be a separate video and also a new back case I might change the front frame no the front frame looks pretty good so and then we're going to take out the middle screw on the rails here the middle screw on these rails it's the only one we need to take out so these are magnetic so they come out easier now that we have that there's one more screw here it is in the SD card reader we're also going to be doing a video on changing the kickstand but this is just going to be a one-off video of changing certain things so we have our back cover like I said this definitely needs to be replaced the kickstand looks good but the back cover definitely needs to be replaced on this but I need to change the power connector to make sure it works and then I need to also uh, change the digitizer and make sure that works and then I will put a new back cover on it take the screw out of the SD card reader all the screws out of the shield here this does have a missing fan screw inside I am aware of that because of the fix earlier I did not put that in so we're going to take our SD card reader off like so and we are going to take our metal plate off. Oh, nope, I left a screw in it. Look at that. That didn't want to come off. That's weird. So we're going to take that off. Now, we have our case here. Now, what I need to take off now is I need to take off the heat sink to get to the power connector because it is um, under the fan so I'm going to take off these three heat sink screws now this has a thermal pad under it I'm conducting an experiment to see if a thermal pad will provide enough con conductivity of heat or heat dissipation to see if that works over a um, thermal grease and so far so far it has, it is really sticking on there and I pulled off the copper. Okay, so that is a, yep, yeah, that is a 
issue with the thermal pad there. I thought it was going to be easy to pull this on and off. Let me stick this copper back down here. Okay, so the copper on this needs to be replaced. I will do that on a separate video. So this one is going to have a couple different things done to it. But first, the power ribbon. So I don't currently have any power ribbons in stock, so I'm going to scavenge one from a, another unit that has um, that is not fixable at the moment. So I have power cables on order. So I am going to go ahead and disconnect the digitizer because I'm going to have to change that in the next video. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that and remove the game card reader. Now I'm going to remove the other two fan screws. And I'm going to undo the fan and take it out. And then this is my power flex here. As you can see, it is all mangled up and, you know, not looking good. So I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to take it out here. And we can see the connector. It looks bad already. So we're going to peel off. It's got tape on here holding it on. Um, try not to damage it any more than it already is. What you can do is you can take a pick. Let me get an iFixit pick here. And what you can do is you can get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol IPA and dip it in there, like around that glue right there. Soak that glue right there, and then you can take your pick and run it across there gently. Gently like so. Let's see here. So let's pull out the connector. And we want to save this foam pad. And we're going to see if we can get this glue off of here. See that IPA really softened that glue, so. Let's take a look at our flex connector here. And see if we can figure out if it is the flex connector by testing it. So that's what we're going to do. So that glue's on there. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to get a little bit more IPA on this glue right here. Soak that. And then I should be able to peel that off. Yep. A little bit more on there. And I'm going to put some new Tessa tape on here. Normally I would use B7000, but I haven't acquired any yet. I have to get that ordered on Monday. Hopefully I get it here before <clears throat> the Christmas holidays. It is the 19th currently. I'm not sure when this video will come out. So I got that cleaned up. There is that. So yep, took that tape right off of there. So the thermal pad does work to dissipate heat, but it does tear that copper off, so I got to uh, get a new piece of copper for that. So 
So, I said I'll make another separate little snippet video for that. So, let's let's set our switch aside here and let's see if we can test this power button here. So, I am going to bring the scope in so we can take a look at it here. Let's go there. Let's go here and let's see if we can't take a look at this here. Okay, so there's the connector there. Looks a little beat up in this area right here. Let's check the connector side here. So, there's a, it seems to press. But let's see if we have a connection on the, the pins. So I'm gonna turn on the meter because I didn't turn it on ahead of time. And I'm gonna put it in continuity mode. I'm not gonna put it on the screen. I'm just gonna let it beep. And then hopefully you guys can hear the beep. So let me get this connector under there. So, so this one right here is your power pin. Here, this one right here is your ground. So I'm gonna test those two, and we're gonna hope that they it doesn't beep because that means it's the power flex ribbon or a bad connection to the cable. So I'm gonna come in here with my meter, and I'm going to touch touch the ground. Like so. And I'm going to get some help. Hey, buddy, can you come here and push a button for me? Can you come stand right over here on this side? My son's going to help me here. He's going to join the video so I can test this. On this side, please. You see this little button right here? This little button right here? Yeah. Right here. Put your finger on it. All right, hold it. Don't don't press it yet. So I didn't hear you. Yeah, don't don't press it yet, buddy. You're fine. Down. You're fine. All right, so we're gonna get this connector. We're gonna pin it down. We're gonna touch here. And he's gonna press the button. Press the button. Did you press it? Yeah. See, there's no connection there. Okay, now press one of the other buttons. Press the one that makes it beep. There, see, press, see, it's beeping, so that's the volume button. Press the other one. So, there you go. But if I do the power button, do the power button, the first one, it's no connection. So, there, this, this, there's a break in this cable somewhere. So, that's good. That means it's definitely the power flex. So, thank you. I'll be over here with my mental video. So, that is definitely the power flex. So I'm not sure where the power flex is damaged, but it definitely tells me that it is the power flex. Um, I've seen people do trace repair on these things, but I am not going to do a trace repair on this. I am going to snag a power a power uh, flex out of a one that is currently a rabbit hole. So the rabbit hole is going to lose its power flex. I have some on order. This one is good. Um, it's been pulled out, so I am going to install this into this here. And then I'm going to end it there because the next video is going to show you how to put the copper tape on. And then the next one is going to show how to change the digitizer. So basically your button goes in like so. Slides in there. Hopefully it slides in there. Yep, there we go. So your button slides in there like that. So make sure it's lined up. Buttons click. So then... Then it's going to stick to this here 
and follow in that track and hook up there. So we need to insert our pad in there. And this is where it would be good to have some B7000 to, to stick this down. But this little pad goes in there to stop that solder joint in there from damaging the flex cable. So that goes in there like that. There's still a little bit of sticky right there. So, and then we're going to hook up our power flex cable. Sorry for bumping the camera. There we go. Hook up our power flex. Make sure everything looks good. And you could put a little tape in there, a little B7000, but I think it's going to be fine the way it is. So there it is. The power flex cable is installed. Well, I really did bump that camera bad. I'm sorry. So that is the power flex cable changed and installed. In the next one, we'll do the copper tape and then the digitizer. Thank you so much for watching. Here are the links to social media. Links to my Patreon page where I post switch data free of charge. No need to sign up. You can just check that information out there. Um, if you do become a Patreon, there will be special benefits available to you. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much. And have